I'm going to talk a, a, about Sarbanes-Oxley. Oxley, of course, is the Ohio congressman, was the Ohio congressman. He retired as well from the, from the Congress. He was the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee. I was the chairman of the Senate Banking and Housing Committee when, we, when this legislation was formulated and brought, and brought forward, and they slapped the Sarbanes-Oxley label on it. Oxley told me subsequently uh, he'd had people in his district wondering why he changed his first name to Sarbanes. And, and, and I have people in Maryland wondering why I now am going around with a hyphenated last name. You know? <laughs> it turned out Enron was the, was the canary in the mine shaft. A, a number of major companies were engaged in convoluted, often fraudulent accounting devices to enhance their earnings, uh, hide losses, drive up their, their stock prices. At the time, uh, Paul Volcker and Arthur Levitt, of course Volcker, former chairman of the Federal Reserve, and Levitt, former chairman of the SEC, warned uh, that the nation was, had fallen into a collective amnesia toward real pain and the loss investors suffered. Over a period of months, market value of public companies fell by some trillions of dollars. Thousands and thousands of jobs were lost, retirement savings dried up. The Wall Street Journal commenting at the time concluded, the scope and scale of the corporate transgressions of the late 1990s now coming to light exceed anything the U.S. has witnessed since the years preceding the Great Depression. Now I'm trying to take you back to give you a sense of what we confronted at the time. We've been through another major economic catastrophe in, 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 recent, in, in, the, in the most recent years, but this is, predates that, obviously. Fortune magazine said phony earnings, inflated revenues, conflicted Wall Street analysts, directors asleep at the switch, this isn't just a few bad apples we're talking about here. This, my friends, is a systemic breakdown. And Money Magazine said, a total failure by everyone, a complete breakdown in the system and all the checks and balances. Well, I'm a new chairman of this committee. I mean, I'd waited years around to become chairman, but I never expected to be confronted with this, with this sort of situation. The seventh largest company in the country going bankrupt. A number of other, uh, it becoming more and more evident day by day, another, a number of other companies were playing the, uh, playing the same game. So we were confronted with, you know, how to respond to this. But this was genuinely bipartisan. And very quickly what we did, we ended the self-regulation of the uh, auditing profession by establishing the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. Before this, the, uh, uh, the auditing accounting profession had been self-regulating. Uh, they had peer review, they had review by their association, but nothing beyond that. I think it's fair to say it had been inadequate, and this legislation now uh, requires accounting firms that audit public companies, in other words, companies that are listed on the exchanges, which is what we limited the bill to, to register with the accounting board which has broad discretion uh, to investigate and, when necessary, impose penalties and to set auditing standards. Uh, we think this change was made necessary because the critical independence, which we think is required, of the independent auditors, companies that list on a public exchange, public companies, must file certified financial statements from an independent auditor. I mean, it's required under law. So in effect, the independent auditors have been given a big piece of business by this statutory requirement. Because a public company has to have an auditor's report. The Supreme Court said about the responsibility of the auditor, and I want to quote this, by certifying the public reports that collectively depict the corporation's financial status. The independent auditor assumes a public responsibility transcending the, the employment relationship with a client. 
This public watchdog function demands that the accountant maintain independence from the client and requires complete fidelity to the public trust. <laughs>